Before I begin this episode, I would like to read out a fan letter that was thrown through my window this morning. Dear Geoffrey, Ever since your first episode, you have continuously pointed out that you own a moustache. Is there some sort of point to this? Well, Steve, the reason is thus. I didn't used to have one, but now I have. Anyway, good day, viewers. This is Geoffrey with a moustache saying, If you have seen my other character chronicles, then it should be apparent that the people I enjoy seeing the most of in films and television series are the comic relief and the minor antagonistic. And in the magical marketable universe of Harry Potter, my favourite character who blended into these two categories, at least in the film adaptations, is the creepy caretaker Argus Filch. Filch knew the secret passageways of the school better than anyone, and could pop up as suddenly as any of the ghosts. The students all hated him. Argus Filch is the janitor, cleaner, hall monitor, and security guard of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. In at least one of the films, he is seen supporting Slytherin, so consequently we must place him in the is probably a bad guy section, though with such villainous creatures this series has in its arsenal, the grumpy, stooped over, shabbily dressed man is far from a serious threat to our heroes especially since Filch cannot do magic, a fact that seems to have been glossed over in this franchise, as Filch is the only recurring character who is a squib, and to be frank, he has a bit of a shitty job. Is this how squibs are being treated? Their only means of employment involves back-breaking labour? And when exactly does Filch get time off? He is regularly seen patrolling the castle all day and night. Doesn't seem like the Minister of Magic gives a flick about it. Who's the MM's advisor? Sir Humphrey Appleby? Tis possible the only reason he has not jacked it in is his secret thrill of seeing youngsters in peril, thus making Hogwarts an ideal place to work. Like Gargamel, Filch's mute assistant is a mangy cat. Mrs. Norris acts like a sort of hound dog, leading her owner to any students who are breaking the rules, mainly the being out of bed during the night one. After the second movie, the cat never really had any real relevance, particularly as Filch does not interact with her, except for one brief moment in the fourth movie, where he amps up his pathetic meter by happily attempting to dance with her. Every time I see Mrs. Norris on screen, I keep thinking how amazingly brilliant this teaming would have been. Mind you, I believe every film needs an anthropomorphic parrot voiced by Gilbert Gottfried. In the books, Filch's nemesis, besides every student, is Peeves the Poltergeist, whose misbehaviour brings Filch to fits of rage, and he regularly vows to have the spirit banished from the castle. Of course, Dumbledore could easily put a stop to Peeves and end Filch's grief by doing so. Add that to the overflowing folder containing evidence showing Dumbledore is a bit of a prick. While nearly headless Nick made it into the first two films, Peeves, who was being played by the recently deceased Rick Mail, ended up cut out, and to date no footage or production photographs showing Mail anywhere near the set have been released. Oh, for God's sake, pull yourself together, man. Filch was played by David Bradley, no relation to David Bradley, a bit part actor on film, television, and the theatre since the 1970s. He was 59 when he found worldwide fame by appearing in seven of the eight Harry Potters. Bradley is also best known for his appearances in both Hot Fuzz and The World's End, three episodes of Game of Thrones, and in 2013, he starred in a docudrama about the creation and early years of Doctor Who. Now let us look at the chronicles of the hardest working janitor in movie history. Now there is a bulging category. 
Argus Filch makes his debut once Harry and the rest of the first years are seated in the rather boastfully named Great Hall. His disapproving glare seems reasonable when you consider for 30 years Filch has had to watch all the students and teachers tucking into a feast while he guards the floating candles. Soon after this, Harry, Ron and Hermione find themselves in the Forbidden Corridor due to running away from Mrs. Norris. Anyone here, my sweet? Seems like this could have easily been avoided by simply telling Filch, Oops, sorry, we must have gotten lost. But you can't really blame us. We are first years, this castle is huge, and the staircases change direction on their own accord. Even the invisibility cloak is no match for Filch. Who's that? Now if Harry can just keep quiet... Stupid boy. Show yourself. Sneaking out of the library, Harry is once again chased by Mrs. Norris, a dilemma that a swift kick could easily solve. I found this. That means there's a student's out of bed. They'd best hurry. Rolf Harris, the ghost of Jimmy Savile, and the entire town of Rotherham are on their way. After they all end up in detention, Filch escorts the three friends and Malfoy to Hagrid's hut. Was it on detention would find you hanging by your thumbs in the dungeons? Intriguing punishment. Sounds like we have a challenger for that school Matilda went to. Good God, man, you're not still on about that bloody dragon, are you? Dumbledore sent them off to Romania. Well, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, but what if he don't like Romania? What if the other dragons are mean to him? I love the conversation here between Filch, Hagrid and the kids. If only such moments could have occurred more in these movies, like they do in the books. Ah, oh, there's more than werewolves in those trees, lad. You can be sure of that. Welcome to Hogwarts. Disobey our rules and we'll torture you. In the Chamber of Secrets, after stealing Mr. Weasley's flying car, Harry and Ron are greeted by... Guess who? Oh dear, we are in trouble. This has become the character's most memorable line. Though I personally prefer this one. No one gets past Argus Filch and makes a fool of him. That level was better than Pac-Man. Oh, Mrs. Pac-Man! The plot of the second film is that something is going around Hogwarts and petrifying, i.e. freezing, various characters. And Mrs. Norris has the honour of being the first victim selected. Filch takes it well. I'll tell ya! Marcus! Have you got the key to my medicine cabinet? I'm dying for a strepsil. She's not dead, Argus. She is, however, in excruciating pain and will never play the accordion again. It's him done it. You saw what he wrote on the wall. Innocent until proven guilty, Filch. Hence why Hogwarts is still employing the professor, who is clearly not a villain, the man who clearly is an imposter, and the caretaker who just threatened to kill the school prodigy. Later, Filch sees Harry at the wrong place at the wrong time. A recurring convenience for the teen. I'll have you out this time, Potter. No, Mr. Filch, y you, you don't understand. Stop, don't come back. At the end of the film, which is renowned for having a cheese factor of 95%, the curse is cured and Filch is briefly seen stroking his pussy. No! No! With The Prisoner of Azkaban, we get all of Filch's screen time used up between the 42 and the 48 minute mark. First, he is seen leading students to the village of Hogsmeade, a trip Harry can't go on because you need permission from your parents. Oh, by the way, if you have only just emerged from your Y2K bunker and missed the phenomenon that was Harry Potter, the twit is an orphan. All those with permission follow me, those without, they put... Filch clearly revelling in Harry's misfortune there. Shortly after this, the fat lady, who lives in the painting which is also the door to the Gryffindor's bedroom, has run away, 
and all the commotion attracts Filch and Dumbledore. Search every painting in the castle to find the fat lady. There's no need for ghosts, Professor. Dramatic pause! The fat lady's there. Joe Brand, or whoever, is hiding because she was threatened by Sirius Black. Gary Oldman playing a villain? Well, I'll be a son of a witch. Secure the castle, Mr. Jones. Beg pardon, sir, but wasn't your beard whiter and ten years older? But locking themselves inside a castle with a serial killer loose in the building proved to be a fatal plan. <laughs> I've searched the astronomy tower and the owl Arisa, but there's nothing there. How dare you use music from a parody of Gone with the Wind instead of the film itself? Just for that, no more screen time for you until the next movie. What a disappointing lack of filch, and there are some idiots who claim this to be their favourite of the series. The next two adventures saw a change in the character and how he was used by the filmmakers. This second most popular clip involving Filch demonstrates he is now being used as comic relief, and a mute one at that. An odd thing for a character to undergo, and perhaps this was done due to the increasing seriousness within the Harry Potter films. After getting lost in a sea of men, it is Filch's job to fire a cannon, which will signal the start of the Triwizard Tournament. If you did not find that amusing, don't worry, it happens again. Surely a character becoming seriously incompetent after years of being sane is a negative? I won't need my high school diploma anymore! I am too smart! I am too smart! SMRT! I stand corrected. In preparation for the Yule Ball, Filch is also given the task of winding the gramophone. Shouldn't some of these odd jobs be given to Hagrid? What does he do all day besides think of profound statements for the trailers? There's a storm coming, Harry. We'd all best be ready when she does. When Harry escapes Ratigan, who kills some Hufflepuff, Filch is seen amongst the crowd gathered round the body, and mourning over the beginning of the Twilight series. You know, when one of your professors can predict the future, this type of thing should have been avoidable. Just saying. We also wish to welcome our new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, Professor Dolores Umbridge. <laughs> this was a subtle setup that Filch is very approving of Dolores Umbridge, but Mrs. Norris is obviously jealous. Filch provides a chunk of the humour, first by putting up more and more rules, and second because he notices that Harry and his friends have discovered the Room of Requirement, so during a montage tries to catch them either entering or leaving. Since they are aware of this, the students leave him a little gift. <gasps> the Ebola virus! Brigade eventually blow up the entrance to the student's lair. Why didn't Filch tell them to do that in the first place? Oh, right, he's lost his voice. But all's well that ends well, and although Filch is not reprimanded by Dumbledore, he does have to remove the love of his life from the school premises, and has to put back the hundred odd paintings she told him to take down. So after being turned into a comical bumbler, like a silent, sinister version of Manuel, the Half-Blood Prince saw Filch returning to his original methods and gave him a few dabs of dialogue. 
We first sort of see him inspecting all the students' luggage with an evil magic detector. I say sort of because we don't get a close-up to clearly establish it is Filch. What's his cane here then? It's not a cane, you cretin, it's a walking stick. And the conversation the figure is having with Malfoy happens at the same time Harry is talking to Luna and then Professor Flitwick, which is naturally more important, so got more attention by the sound department. On that topic, why did they completely redesign Flitwick? Did they want to get as far away from the Chris Columbus adaptations as possible, but only had the courage to take it out fully on one character? At least they left Filch's design alone. We'll take a good look, lads. That would have been ridiculous. Unless they gave him a red parrot voiced by Gilbert God, Filch pops up later, having caught Draco Malfoy snooping outside Professor Slughorn's party. I just discovered this boy lurking in an upstairs corridor. And while the audience is wondering what Malfoy is up to, I am wondering whose grave Filch dug up to get that suit. You know, Filch, um, I didn't invite you to the party. Please leave. Your stench is awful. Oh. Oh. Take off me, you squib! You just called a member of staff the wizard equivalent of retarded. You are getting so sued. At the end of the film, once Malfoy kills Dumbledore after he asked him to tone down the wizard slurs, Filch can be seen amongst the vast crowd of students and staff, all pondering how the headmaster's body can still be intact, despite it plummeting from the tip-top of the castle onto the stone ground below. Oh, cheer up, Harry. Maybe he'll regenerate like the last Dumbledore. <laughs> Filch doesn't appear in the first part of the final Harry Potter film, and I didn't like that film because it cut out the goodbye scene of the Dursleys, but it kept in the scene of Harry and Hermione dancing, and that pisses me off. Part two. In the Deathly Hallows deuce, it seems that a compromise was done between the two versions of Filch we were presented with in this series. Students, out of bed! They are supposed to be out of bed, you blithering idiot! Oh. He is back to being comic relief, but his voice box remains switched on. Exactly where is it I'll be leading him to, Mom? The dungeons would do. With that said, those are his only lines in this film. And the last in the franchise. A deleted scene shows Filch locking the Slytherins up in the dungeon, as the castle is under attack from the Pale Lizard Man's army. Son of a bitch! When a temporary ceasefire is called, we are treated to a very sombre scene of Harry surveying the damage his mere existence has caused. Filch is one of these casualties, with a slight cut on his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is Filch going to be okay? The battle is won, and before the epic saga rolls its last credits, the final shot inside the castle, and also of Hagrid, contains Filch beginning his long job of sweeping up the rubble. That sight gag got a huge laugh, at least from the audience I was in, so overall, Filch wins! Mind you, the scene after this where we learn Harry has named his son Albus Severus got an even bigger laugh, though I doubt that was the intent. So, in conclusion, <sighs> do you really need to sum up what you've said in a Character Chronicles video? Well, I suppose I don't have to condense what I've been saying, but... I usually do, so get on with it. What's the bloody point? 75% of the people who clicked on this video would have stopped watching after the first 30 seconds. 
Now you listen here. Jeffrey, stop arguing with your voiceover. End the damn video and make me a sandwich. Yes, sir. You know, I envy Filch. Granted he was the sole caretaker of a massive castle, but at least he had a kitty to keep him company, and his employer was only partially demented. Cheerio. This book has some masterfully done cliffhanger chapters. Now I should read all of these. Nah.